went down there. Gorilla. A gorilla's only how heavy. The average man, the average human. 160, 180, whatever. Really? Just say 200. 200 times 4 is 80. What are you trying to say? It's only 4 times as much, but the truck is how much heavier than us, mostly? 40 times as much. 40 times, 40 times. Okay, that's why you watch out for it. Okay, so who, who's going to win? The truck. the truck. Who's going to be disseminated? The car. The car. Here's how I'm going to prove it. Here's how I'm going to show you. Okay? Could you guys ever stop that moving semi tractor trailer that's 80,000 pounds? Did you ever do it? Positive? Take two cars, right? The same size, same weight. Traveling at the same speed, what happens when they contact like that? They just okay. So they cancel each other's momentum. Yeah, momentum. Now. That's exactly that's the word. P equals M V. P stands for momentum. Okay, and momentum is the product of what? what we've been talking about the differences in what the velocity and the the mass, the size of the vehicle. Okay, that's size with motion. Here we go. They cancel each other out. Okay, so if this one's moving faster, this one slower, what's going to happen? Real, real. Okay, good. Can you ever stop this truck? You can? You can? Oh, Tristan, he's quick. On the trigger. Wow, that's absolutely right. You've got P equals MV. MV, in other words, equals MV. A semi tractor trailer traveling at 80,000 with 80,000 pounds on it, would have to be going what speed in order to match your, who wanted the Jeep? The Jeep that's 4,000 pounds, or a Tahoe, who has a Tahoe, things like that, traveling at 40 miles an hour. What's the math? 4,000 times 40 equals 160,000 units. Momentum, 80,000 pounds goes into that. How many times? Got it. Just a mere two. Two miles per hour, and they cancel each other out. So what does that look like? Two miles an hour, and you're zooming in. They stop. What's what's the implication for you as a pedestrian versus even a motorist? Would you walk out in front of an SUV that's traveling 40 miles an hour? Why? <laughs> Yeah. Okay. okay. Would you walk out in front of a semi moving two miles an hour? Yeah. No. It has the same what? It has the same momentum. The same amount of forces are really going to hit and impact you. You might not go flying, all right, but that weight is just going to keep pushing, pushing, pushing against you. The impact is so strong, it's so powerful. All right. So we know we could stop it moving. To, now, who encounters a semi moving two miles an hour? It's rare in the traffic jam, sure. Can you get out of the way at a two mile an hour moving and save yourself? Sure, you can, you can walk away maybe. So um, average walking speed is like 2.3 miles an hour, so you can beat it, all right? But uh, what, uh, what if you're moving in a highway situation? The freeway. Record. Now you're encountering that semi moving how fast? 60. 60 miles an hour? Okay. Let's do the math that way. 60 miles an hour times 80,000 pounds would equal what? What would that equal? And then how fast would you have to be going in order to stop it? Say again? It would be 100. Yeah, there you go. Four million eight hundred. That's it exactly. Eight hundred thousand wow. units. Twelve hundred miles. And four thousand goes into the half fast. Joel, put on the on the rod. Wow. You guys hear? One thousand two hundred miles an hour to stop it in his tracks. And of course, obviously, what? You no one can drive it. What drives it, or what flies at that speed? Okay, jet engines, something that's, but then what happens with at the impact? 
sort of. Yeah, there's nothing left. There's nothing left. Okay, so you're only a mere 3,000 pounds, and you see that semi coming down the road at you. Duh, you're on your cell phone. Uh, you're on the radio. You're, missing, you're talking to your friends. And the semi trucker makes mistakes too, falls asleep. Comes crossing over your solid yellow line. What's he doing? What's he doing? What's he doing? I don't know. It doesn't matter. He's coming at you. He's going to kill you. Right? You always pay attention to a semi tractor trailer coming to any vehicle on the road, but especially the yellow decimate. Nothing left. Nothing left. There was a, a really shocking story um, about a couple of years ago in Puyallup. Really sad. A, uh, a guy, a uh, father of two, climbing up the hill from where the Puyallup Fair is. You guys know about where that is? Yeah. Highway 512. All right, climbing up the hill there, past Meridian. And he's talking on his cell phone with his mom, which he probably shouldn't have been. But uh, all mom heard was the last words of, Mom, I love you. And that was it. You didn't hear any more. It was the sun. Well, the trucker coming down the hill the opposite direction had decided that he needed to pick up the CD that he dropped on the floor in front of him. So he's leaning down. What happens to the truck? Swerves. Goes where? Into the, into the center median. You have those cables now? Those are they're just called median cables. And what do you think the truck did to those median cables? Right, right, oh, yeah, right, right through them, right through them. The string, you know, tight string. That was it. Rip through there, gets to the oncoming traffic, and encounters this guy, and that was it. He was dead at 32. So he was dead. Hmm? So he was dead. Pretty much. Yeah. I mean, that's why it was his last words in Testament. What are you gonna do? Tell mom you love it. Words. There's so many. And why? Because people are doing stupid things on the road. We gotta keep going. We're gonna talk more about some depressing things later. Yeah. Not last year, but three years ago. Yeah, about three years ago. Yeah, three years ago. Yeah. Go where? North. North towards Kent. Yeah. And then and um. We slid and hit the, um, hit the, 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 not, the Jersey barrier, barrier. Yeah. and we didn't know that behind us, an SUV had slid and, like, tipped over, and everybody behind and crashed, and nobody could get to us for six hours. Because it was, like, all the Because everything was backed up there. Yeah, and then once it started going south, it was intact. Like, because the SUV crashed on that side, too. Oh, <laughs> the, the turkey necking and things that we talked about last time. Yeah. Rubber Rubber necking. Rubber you see a crash, and then another crash happens. There you go. Human error. It's, it's everywhere, right? And you got to pay close attention, especially to these killers. All right? Semis. Now, you guys mentioned some other vehicles. we got to talk about them. We're going to look at them in the driver's guide. What are some laws that govern other special vehicles? Well, you guys mentioned the buses. They have certain laws that govern them, like where they can travel, with whom, who gets to control them. What do you have to have in order to drive certain vehicles that are like that size and weight, a bus or a semi, a what? It's actually a different sort of license. They call, say it again, somebody said it. Commercial. Yeah, you got it. You guys are going for your what? Your I, D, L, well, guess what? The C, D, L is kind of, kind of the highest level you could go. And it's called what, Keegan? Commercial. Commercial driver's license. How old do you have to be to get it? 21. Used to be. Now it's, yeah, it's only 18 now. It's, I don't know why they drop the age so much, but 20, 21 I think is better for average experience. Um, CDL, and it, and it costs about $3,000 to earn that license. 3000 bucks. And then even then you might not even have a job. But you got to monitor a lot of things about the, the vehicle, the inspections that they showed you there. Now you're driving your, your truck along. Where are you not allowed to drive? City streets. City streets might be prohibited. Very good. Bridges. bridges certain bridges would because of the what? Height. The height. Now that's something you haven't thought about. Your height restriction. You're only worried about you know how wide you are, 
maybe. But look, there's this height restriction there and then up there. You better know what how what your highest point is on the vehicle that you're driving. Mm -hmm. That's again why you watch out for those old guys driving their Minnebagos. Are they where? You try to take them through drive throughs or something, get stuck. Underneath little tr uh, tunnels, no good. Okay, you gotta be aware about other things as you get into this level. And there's all kinds of additional endorsements. So this is a license, but then you get endorsements that, that allow you to travel and haul different cargo. Hazardous materials, right? Like fuel, good, what else? Propane, different kinds of, of gases, what else? Toxic waste. Now that's a good one. I don't know how to draw that actually. That's yeah, cool. That is, you're good? Okay. Maybe we'll just put Homer Simpson up there. Yeah. Toxic. Works for the nuclear plant. And anybody that calls that has to have the highest of clearance ever as a driver in this country. Unless you're a Secret Service and you're traveling with the president. That's about it. That's the it. They fingerprint you for it. Background checks. You got it. Yeah. I mean, you don't want somebody from, you know, an enemy nation coming and figuring out where the toxic bombs are and uh, nuclear waste materials are. Could be used for something. Ill gain. Good. Okay. How about, uh, what's another vehicle you guys haven't mentioned? You encounter them so often. Said, uh, did you have another one? I was going to say vehicles that carry, like, compressed gas or that's absolutely right. They may be prohibited from traveling where? Compressed gases? They, they have some restrictions around Seattle, in fact. You've got to pay close attention if you're one of these, these guys. And you, you're not allowed to use a certain freeway, maybe? Anybody know? I-90? I-90? Why might they be prohibited from using I-90? If you go from Seattle, for instance, to, to Mercer Island, what happens? To get to Mercer Island, you have to use what? What kind of? You got the floating bridge plus something else at the end that you go through. Tunnels. There you go. Tunnels. You have a breakdown, an explosion inside a tunnel. What's going to happen? Explosions usually do what? That's right. Usually they go up, but now, like Keegan said, it's going to go this way. Destroy a lot more. And it's bad. Good. All right. Somebody said it. Fire. Right. The EMS. What do you got to know about emergency vehicles now? Emergency vehicles. Can you just do anything you want around them? Pull over. Okay, pull over when? when it's safe. Lights or sirens? Anything else? When they're. Okay, how about this? So now you're uh, coming the opposite direction. Okay, lights, sirens, and and you got to do what? Pull, pull, pull off to the, yeah, and right and stop. stop. Okay, now they go past. And then what do you do? Just put that up. No big deal. Okay, but now you're in the opposite direction. Coming from here. All right, and then the truck's behind you. What are you supposed to do? Pull over, come to a stop. The truck goes past. What do you do, Cooper? Wait. Wait. And then what? Just, just do what? Oh, there's a, there's a specific law. Definitely a signal to get back in. Definitely got to look at your mirror, get into the whole squad routine, but you can't just get in behind them and follow. And maybe more than four seconds now. There's a specific law. Sometimes they have it on the back of the truck. How much? How much? B, I think. How many? 300. No. 500. Ah! Okay. There you go, that's what it was. Yeah, you got it. It's either running one of those, you know, it's 300, 500, sometimes 600, 100, sometimes. Okay, everybody needs to know that. EMS, following distance is 500 feet. Why do they do that? Think it through. Why can't you just get back in behind them and follow them and draft them? Why? There might be more. That's it exactly, really. For any one incident, be it fire or a crash car, you know, medical or whatever, you may have a, a second vehicle in row, even if it's the battalion chief or something trying to catch up to it. Good. 
And then, of course, you might have the ambulance in pursuit as well. All right? How about a special rule involving... Where's my cop car? The cop car's over here. You have different cars. I got it. Behind the Starbucks cup. There it is, good. No ambulance. I don't think they make those yet. I don't see any. Okay, so now you got a cop car. Do the same thing, right? They're past, and then you start to fall. Oh, how far back? No? No? It's pretty easy, actually. It's also 500, yeah. Okay, it's also 500 because you can have another in pursuit. All right, now they've got. Oh, They've got, I keep mentioning his name, don't I? Everybody, everybody's going to know the name of Cooper that views this video to wow. uh, later on in life. Now he's stopped and he made his, his, his catch. And he's on the side of the road. Now you're coming up on them. What are you supposed to do as a motorist? You've got two options. Slow down if you're aware. This is the new law. And I just saw a brand new sign today on the freeway going past Emerald Queen. They had a huge display board, and it said, slow down for police officers stopped. It's a $359, $356 ticket if you don't. So slow down, or if you can't do that, do what? Yeah, yeah, move over to the left. And that's that's what the picture actually showed. It had, it had the... It had the car here, and it said, uh, go like this into the other lane, way over there. Good. Okay, you got to know these laws. They're brand new ones, too. And if you're not informed, it doesn't matter. You can still get the ticket for it. Be aware. And, and keep, uh, keep up on your reading, maybe, in this material. All right, we're going to look at some material out of here. Everybody got a book? Tell me who doesn't have a book. And uh, we'll look at some questions. Need another book.